We've got to start moving beyond this idea that rape is about sexual orientation. It isn't. It's about power and control. Reynard Sinaga has been called Britain's worst ever rapist. In January, he was convicted of 159 sex offences against men in Manchester. This was a case that had something quite different to it, which was that the majority of the men that were victims of this particular crime didn't necessarily know that they were victims of this particular crime. Duncan Craig is the chief executive of Survivors Manchester, a charity that works with male survivors of sexual abuse and rape. He was closely involved in advising the police in supporting Sinaga's victims. So you can see we're at outside factory, just over the road, literally a stone's throw, 300 feet, we've got Fifth Avenue, all of these places around here where people are just having a night out, just like everybody else, a few too many drinks, come out for a cig, hang out on the street for a bit, can't get back in, or get lost from the mates, and what happens? You stand here and somebody comes along, a good Samaritan, as what has been talked about in the newspapers, and they put their trust in this individual, just like everybody else would, and then they off they go. And sadly, that's where things took a turn for the worse. And literally, it's taken us 10 seconds to walk here, to the block of flats where things go wrong, where this good Samaritan is helping people charge their mobile phone, giving them a place to stay while they wait for a taxi, and we know what came next. This was a case that had something quite different to it, which was that the majority of the men that were victims of this particular crime didn't necessarily know that they were victims of this particular crime. The majority of the men are young heterosexual men that are around the, around the student area that hang out in places like Factory and Fifth Avenue. So it felt a bit different. Here at the heart of Manchester's historic LGBT gay village, uh, a place where so many Mancunians come for a night out and uh, I think the thing that saddens me the most about some of this story is that when it first broke and we were talking to different sections of the media, everybody jumped on a question around sexual orientation. Because we're talking about male victims of rape and because we're talking about men and rape, there was this automatic assumption that this was something that had happened here. It wasn't, it was something that had happened seven, 800 yards down the road. We've got to start tackling this stigma. We've got to start moving beyond this idea that rape is about sexual orientation. It isn't, it's about power and control. And the quicker we get to that, the quicker we can start people feeling safer and speaking out and getting the help when they absolutely need it. I think lads are great at talking if we help them talk, if we start a conversation. So yeah, we need to move on, you've got my back from if someone's trying to kick me head in to I've had too much to drink and I need to get home. And I think on the whole, honestly, I think as men, we're really good at looking after each other. There's loads of messages around making sure that women are not on their own at night, women are, that anybody that is uh, out on their own that's a female is looked after. We need to stop thinking about just one particular type of person. I need to think about everybody.